With the release of Ruin and Help Wanted 2 in recent months, there's been a lot of theorizing going on in the FNAF community involving newer pieces of evidence. Characters like Gregory, Cassie, and the Mimic have been popping up everywhere, but there's still some questions that have never been answered from the older games. So in this video, we'll take a step back and ask a question from one of the classic games. Why can Foxy see through mask in FNAF 2. In this game, which takes place after FNAF 1, you play as a new employee named Jeremy Fitzgerald, and it's your job to watch over the animatronics during your classic 12 to 6 night shift. But you have a few enemies to deal with along the way. The toy animatronics, the puppets, and the withered animatronics. The toy animatronics were made after the company decided that the characters needed a new and updated look that was more kid friendly. And the withered animatronics were made for the previous Freddy's location in 1985, but it closed down. While they were going to be repurposed for the current location, the withered animatronics were run down and scary looking. So they were kept in storage only for the use of spare parts. Notice the older models sitting in the back room. Uh, those are from the previous location. We just use them for parts now. And because the withered animatronics were so run down, there was no point in using them for the new restaurant. So it was decided that the toy animatronics would be the main stars. We also know that the toy animatronics had a special security system. They've spent a small fortune on these new animatronics. Uh, facial recognition, advanced mobility, they even let them walk around during the day. Isn't that neat? <clears throat> but most importantly, they're all tied into some kind of criminal database so they can detect a predator a mile away. Heck, we should be paying them to guard you. But because the animatronics weren't given a proper night mode, they roam free at night trying to find a room with people in it according to Phone Guy. They're meant to be around children in spaces with loud noises, but when it gets quiet, they'll try to find an environment that matches more closely to what they're used to. This leads to them trying to find us in the security room. But of course, we know that these animatronics aren't here to have a party with us. One wrong move and the game is over by getting killed by one of them. Which is why in FNAF 2, we are granted a Freddy mask, something that can be worn when we come in contact with most animatronics so they won't recognize us as human. Due to their new facial recognition system, this would trick them into believing that we ourselves are an animatronic and shouldn't be attacked. However, this doesn't work when it comes to two characters, the puppet and Foxy. Instead, we must keep the music box wound up and have our flashlight handy. But why doesn't the mask work on them? In the case of the puppet or marionette, they would be able to recognize us mainly due to their superior senses. After all, they make this statement in Ultimate Custom Night. The others are like animals, but I am very aware. Now, whether or not you believe Ultimate Custom Night is canon is up to you, but there's no doubt that Marionette stands out from the others. She was originally supposed to be a security puppet meant to protect Charlotte Emily, Henry Emily's daughter, who was once a co-owner of Freddy's, so her facial recognition skills would be top tier, so much so that a mere mask wouldn't be able to fool her. Also, after the first missing children's incident in in 1985, the puppet was in charge of bringing life to the dead children, acting as an all-powerful animatronic. They're known for protecting the others, and it wouldn't make sense that they'd mistake a fake Freddy mask over the real thing. So if that's the case for the puppet, then why doesn't the mask work on Foxy? This whole matter could easily be settled with an explanation relating to game mechanics. You can't use the mask as a defense mechanism for all all of the animatronics because it would get boring and just straight up tedious. However, there might be a deeper explanation than this. Similar to the puppets, Foxy also had an experience encountering dead children. During the second missing children's incident of 1987, he saw the children before and after their murders. This can be seen in FNAF 2's Foxy Go 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 minigame in which he exits from the curtains in Pirate Cove and 
walks into a room with children who are excited to see him. This is done two more times. However, on the third, Purple Guy, aka William Afton, can be seen in the bottom right corner. And when Foxy walks into the next room, he encounters the dead children who were murdered by Afton. The soul inside of Foxy from the first missing children's incident is incredibly angry that this has happened a second time. And since William Afton was in a purple suit, we can assume he was dressed like a security guard. If Foxy happened to notice Jeremy wearing the purple shirt, then he could have connected us with Afton, making him extremely violent towards us whether we were wearing the mask or not. Also, if Foxy happened to see Purple Guy dressing up as Spring Bonnie, then he would be able to tell if a human is in a suit or wearing a mask versus being a real animatronic. And this isn't too far-fetched, seeing as Foxy is actually a pretty smart character who says so himself. <laughs> Never underestimate the cunning of a pirate, or a fox for that matter. There's also another reason why Foxy may be able to see through Jeremy's facade, mainly based on this piece of information given by Phone Guy. After referring to the withered animatronics being used for parts, he says this. The idea at first was to repair them. Uh, they even started retrofitting them with some of the newer technology. But they were just so ugly. The way that Phone Guy says this line makes it seem like the repair started but never finished. Is it possible? While it's a bit of a stretch, it might be important to note the order in which the main four FNAF characters are listed. It's always Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, then Foxy. He always comes last. It's also this way in the custom night menus for games 1, 2, and 4. This order probably refers to when the characters were created or established as a Fazbear entity. And maybe it could also refer to the order in which the characters got worked on, Foxy being the last one every time. Also, he's usually in a separate space compared to the other animatronics, while Freddy, Bonnie, and Chica share the main stage. Foxy has Pirate Cove as his own, so it makes sense if he was worked on last because he was separated from the others. Phone Guy also says this about Foxy specifically. Oh yeah, Foxy. Uh, hey listen, uh, that one was always a bit twitchy. Uh, I'm not sure if the Freddy head trick will work on Foxy. For some reason, Foxy has always been difficult to work on. It's unclear what the specifics are, but we know that this is related to him being able to see through the mask mechanic. The company always knew that Foxy was a problematic animatronic and probably didn't bother to equip him with the new security recognition because he would end up being replaced anyway. That or it just didn't work on him to begin with. Finally, Phone Guy mentions another option thing about Foxy that's different from the other animatronics. Uh, also, uh, check on the curtain in Pirate Cove from time to time. The character in there seems unique in that he becomes more active if the cameras remain off for long periods of time. I guess he doesn't like being watched. Now, this is a recording from FNAF 1. However, we know that parts of the withered animatronics were transferred into the FNAF 1 animatronics, so we can conclude that the same soul inside of withered Foxy is the same as the one inside of FNAF 1 Foxy. Since Foxy doesn't like to be watched, we have to keep our cameras on him to avoid any direct confrontation. But what happens when we put the mask on? We stare directly at the animatronic until they disappear. This probably makes Foxy even more angry knowing that we're just sitting there watching him, so this could be another reason as to why he attacks us with the mask. 